Express at the pulse of the community, providing all things news, music, fashion events, and everything that we talk about in between. It's a lifestyle. We are the culture. Hi, and welcome to the culture. So happy to be back. I'm your host, Jessica Garrett Modkins, and joining us today is lifestyle real estate agent, Miles Battle. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Ms. Marcus. I appreciate it. I feel like feel like a real internet superstar right now. Hey, hey, you are a real internet superstar. Speaking of which, you're gonna make me go ahead and play this because I'm I'm shifting my uh, pop, uh, apps on my phone and I see this alert come up. I'm like, let me see what's going on. And lo and behold, what do I see? But a commercial. A commercial. Let's look at this and then we got to unpack exactly what Miles Battle is up to. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I'm Miles Battle with Lifestyle International Realty coming to you live with a new listing alert in the Goulds, South Miami Heights neighborhood. Located right off of US 1 and Southwest 213th Street, this 11,000 square foot lot is perfect for an investor looking to build a duplex or a single family home. So DM me for more details. I'm waiting for your offers. I absolutely love it. DM me. I'm waiting for your offer. I love it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I haven't seen anything like this. And, you know, my background is marketing. My background is TV. I have not seen anything like this and uh, we need to unpack it. But first, let me let me even go back. How did you get your start in real estate? Because you weren't always in real estate. Right. I actually have been in real estate for some time as an investor, more so than as a as a full-time sales agent. So I, I had the pleasure of being an investment partner on a on like a 10 unit uh, apartment building in Little Haiti. I had owned investment property in Ocala. And so I had some experience from the investor side and understood the game from that side. However, I recently just uh, went through some trials and tribulations with regards to my full-time nine to five which actually was a blessing in disguise. So when it, when my life shifted in that very moment, I thought about what would I do now and how would I move forward professionally to, um, to basically, you know, provide for my family. And I was like, you know what, I think I can go into real estate and, and do my thing there. So that, that was really the action that precipitated me going into real estate and becoming a full-time real estate agent and it's funny because even when i did get my license i was i was still on the fence on if i would actually go through with it because i went back to to the little vocational school and and got a cam license which is community association management license so that i can manage like hoas co-ops condos and that as well since i had experience from that coming from my corporate world while i was doing um corporate property management in a sense for for the airport uh, managing the concessions so you know i i, I kind of just was still on the fence with it but um i have you know you know you get those confirmations and revelations from god and once he confirmed it 2020 january i hit the ground running haven't looked back since how awesome so you pivoted and you pivoted at a time when this whole housing market uh, took a nice shift, but before yeah. we get into that, I keep want, I'm, I'm so excited about you being on. I have so much to talk to you about, but I gotta lay the land for everyone who doesn't know your journey. Now you are with uh, Lifestyle International Real, correct? How did you choose that brokerage firm over any of the others? What what made it different? Well. Lifestyle International Realty, they reached out to me upon receiving my license. And I actually had the pleasure of interviewing with Keller Williams. I interviewed with uh, Kai's and I interviewed with 
Remax unofficially, and I interviewed with with Lifestyle. So, uh, shout out to uh, Noel Barantinos, who who was the gentleman who actually recruited me to Lifestyle. But when I sat down with Noel, I didn't feel like I was being sold anything. I felt like their their pitch was just genuine because what he when we sat down and talked, the first thing he told me was just that listen, I'm not here to to make disparaging or derogatory remarks about any other brokerage firm. He said, because there's several good brokerage firms in, in this city that you can work for. He said, I just want to present to you what we at Lifestyle has to offer. And, and I'm a real big vibe person. You know, I'm a real big vibe, spiritual connection person. So when I sat down with him, I, I connected with him like I didn't with any other of the, uh, any other individuals who I, I had the pleasure of sitting down with him interviewing. So once once we went through the process and then uh, he they, he just basically was like, oh, you, you want to be a part of it? And I said, you know, I'm going to go home and pray about it. And I did. And again, I got the confirmation from God and the rest is history. Awesome. Awesome. Now, we all know that in every industry that you work in, there's some things that are let's just say a pro and other things that are a con touch on that for a moment as it relates to the real estate industry. You know, this came at a very, very, very pivotal point in my life. My father, my parents are getting older, uh, require a little bit more attention, especially my dad. Um, so I would say the biggest advantage as for being a real estate agent for me is the, the time, the fact that I'm able to really be my own boss and really work, at my own schedule and I can fit in things that I wouldn't necessarily normally be able to fit in if I was working the standard nine to five corporate uh, job in that profession. So I would say that's definitely a benefit. Obviously, you know, the the money when you're able to close those deals and, and make that financial hedgeway, that's a great thing. But I would say definitely one of the cons is just that Man, it's it's such a tedious process to take a client from start to finish in the closing process, whether you're buying or whether you're selling. Either way, there's so many um, so many instrumental details in that contract or in that in that transaction that you have to know that you have to learn, and you know it can be rather nerve wracking. It really can. It can be. It it, it teaches you patience. Um, it teaches you persistence. It teaches you how to how to how to work. When they talk about you know when corporate execs talk about working well with others, uh, if you can't work well with others in real estate, then you can't work. Period. Because every aspect of the transaction, you're depending on somebody else, and that was something that I had to get used to and learn how to finesse. Because I wasn't used to depending on other people. I'm not used to having to call a guy to do an inspection and then to call a different guy to do the appraisal and then to have another person doing the lending and to have another person doing this and to have it. So now I have a team of individuals that I've insulated myself with so that when I go to a client, if they say they need this done or they need that done, I got people that I can call. So I would say that was definitely one of the cons because it took me a while to get used to that and build that um, build that team. But we're here now. So and then yeah. all of that, all of that experience, all of those different um, pros and cons. Let's put on top of that this being a uh, a market where sellers have leverage. Absolutely. Talk, talk to us about what that means for you and, and how you're able to approach this market. Well, what that means is that if, if you're working, if you're on that side of the transaction, if you're working with a seller or you're representing a seller, that means you just sit back and wait to collect the check because it's really just that easy in a sense. However, if you're working with a buyer who's trying to purchase that home, uh, it means that you have to get creative and you have to be realistic and in informing and enlightening your clients as to what their expectations are and the process associated with those expectations because for just to give you an example, the last deal that I, I represented the seller. So, you know, it, like I said, it's really just a matter of just marketing the property, 
going through those instrumental details, handling that situation. But we had over 20 offers for that property. We had over 20 offers and all of them were pretty much above asking price. So when I say informing your buyer, that's exactly what I mean. You have to come in and be like, listen, offering that there, there is no such thing as a deal. You're not buying anything in this market below market value. So if we're going to offer, you need to offer either at and in most cases above asking price if you're able to do it. And that creates a very difficult dynamic for buyers because the average person, when you talk about putting three and a half percent down for a down payment and you talk about closing costs, they don't have an extra 10 to 15,000 to throw on top of that to make their offer more attractive. So you have a situation in this market where a lot of, a lot of buyers are being priced out just based on that dynamic alone. So you have to be you have to inform your buyers and let them know what they're up against. And then consequently, you you alter your strategy according to your buyers buying power and capability. And then you move from that point. But right now in this market, like you said, um, sellers have all the leverage. man. They have all the leverage and they have all the power and, and buyers are pretty much at their mercy. That lot that you have uh, for sale that I saw, uh, the, the commercial. Yes, ma'am. The DM part, that that is what just pulled my heartstrings because I'm I am just looking at how the real estate market is evolving. Um, you're selling property on social media. What even made you think to uh, to do that? Well, would you believe, Miss Miss Markins, that prior to even getting into real estate, I had no social media or social media experience. I didn't have a Facebook. I didn't have a Twitter. I didn't have Instagram. I didn't have any of that. So uh, shout out to to George Canciabello, my broker at Lifestyle International Realty. He when we first sat down and started going through just how they teach you how to sell, that was one of the main things they would harp on. They would harp on you building your social media presence and posting and developing a strategy to keep your face in front of your followers and your friends so that every time they see you, then they'll think of real estate. So that was just part of the whole strategy that was implemented by my by my brokerage firm. And um, what I saw from that was just that there was the results were undeniable because anytime from the very first deal that I closed, anytime I posted anything real estate on Facebook or Instagram that I closed, you best believe in the next 24 to 48 hours, somebody always calls me, somebody always texts me, somebody always DMs me and it's like, hey, I'm interested in, or hey, I'd like to know about this. So that correlation just came full circle for me. And it just made me believe in the power the marketing power of social media and how you can really use it to reach a bevy of of buyers and potential clients. So that's that's how we do it. Shout out to you because you're using uh, social media and you have evolved the real estate game. Because not that I don't see advertisements for properties for sale on real estate uh, on on social media. But I don't hear anyone telling me, DM me. See, that immediate connection allows someone who may be interested being able to know that I have immediate access to that person. Whereas if I call them, they may not answer. I have the option of either trying to text them if I know it's not a landline or I leave a message in hopes of them calling me back. But there's something about the availability and instant reaction that you can get from people who are looking for you to contact them on social media. So keep going. It reminded me of like last week, we're in New York, we're in this Uber and just having, you know, small talk with our driver. Right. He was talking about how yellow cabs really just force themselves out of the industry because they're not, they don't have technology. They don't have apps. Whereas if I were uh, in a union of taxi cab driver, drivers, I would have implored upon upper management, let's build an app. Let's have it direct. People don't need to call a phone number to have them to come to pick me up. And when are they coming to pick me up? 
I mean, how long am I waiting after I place that phone call? They just did not keep up with technology and the way life is so instant now. And so kudos to you on that. That's what it reminded me of. So I think that is, I mean, I think that it's fairly common with with regards to real estate, especially in this market. You see a lot of Instagram posts where people saying to, you know, DM them for details. So you're in that market, so you mm -hmm. know what they they are doing, like mm -hmm. your um your counterparts, right? But I don't know your counterparts, and your counterparts are not a part of my sphere of influence. So I like that we use that we use that vernacular quite often in in real estate sphere of influence. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, they're not in my sphere. So you're the first for me, um, and I think it's a pretty big deal. And it doesn't matter if John uh, or Jane they're doing it. John and Jane they're not my friends. So you're the first of the people that I know that that's doing that. And so I think that it's a game changer. Don't know other black realtors that are doing it. So there, there you go. I'm just telling you about what I know. And then, send, huh? I was going to say, send your boy some clients, Ms. Ma. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's talk about this. So Miami has the largest real estate association in the country. Yeah. In the country. So how yeah. are you able, other than telling people to DM you, <laughs> how do you distinguish yourself from the competition? I think first it starts with with integrity, honesty, and, and trust. Man, I want any client that I deal with or any client that gives me the privilege or the opportunity to work with them, to represent their business interests on any real estate transaction, I want them to have blind faith in me. I want them to believe in everything that I tell them. And more importantly, I have to be willing to stand and deliver on everything and all the promises that I make. I don't really try to sell my clients on marketing or the bells and whistles surrounding real estate. I try to sell them on just a genuine, uh, a genuine business relationship in which I'm going to represent your business interests better than anybody else. And I think that in itself really distinguishes me from the competition, because at the end of the day, there, like I said, this is like you said, this this real estate association, Miami has the, the most realtors in it of anywhere in the country. And when you have that kind of saturation of a market, you know, you run into a lot of bad agents and, um, but believe it or not, Ms. Mockins, I thank God for those bad agents because I've had the opportunity to pick up a client who had a bad experience with somebody else. And then they had a positive experience with me. So as long as I keep doing that and doing something, I'm, that means I'm doing something right. So the first thing, like I, to answer your question, the first thing would be to just to represent my client with the utmost uh, professionalism, honesty, integrity, and character. And then uh, secondly, to try to be innovative. And um, the video that you showed at the beginning of the broadcast, that's that's one of the other uh, tools, you know, when we talk about um, being innovative and being ahead of the curve and, you know, paying attention to what's going on in the market and then adjusting accordingly. So when I'm able to put those two things together, I think it, it, it sets success and having a multitude of clientele uh, will, is undeniable. Mm -hmm. Right. Come witness the revival of the Orange Blossom Classic as it's never been seen before. Live and breathe the rivalry as Florida A&M University takes on Jackson State University in an unparalleled match years in the making. Do yourself a favor and don't miss out. Orange Blossom Classic, Labor Day weekend at the Hard Rock Stadium, Miami Gardens. Buy your tickets now. Tickets on sale now at orangeblossomclassic.com slash tickets. And then before we go, uh, Mal, any type of uh, wisdom or advice that you can give for both the seller and the buyer right now? Shoot, I don't have to give any advice for sellers because shoot, if you, I mean, you, <laughs> you, you're basically, you're sitting on a gold mine if you're looking to sell your property. You're selling your property, man. Um, it, it's such the inventory is so low like you know as soon as you put it on the market it's going to generate buzz and if it doesn't if it doesn't that means something is really really wrong something is really really wrong 
for buyers, I would say you you want to first and foremost you want to make sure that you're pre-approved, okay? You want to make sure you're pre-approved. You want to make sure that um, your your debt to income ratio as it pertains to your personal finances is as low as possible. And I would also say that you want to make sure that your credit score is, is as high as possible because those are really the determining factors as far as getting the best interest rate that you can to purchase a house and then save your money, man, save your money. Cause ultimately cash is King. And if you're trying to buy a home in this market, as I stated previously, you're going to have to offer more than the asking price, unless, unless you're going directly to the builder or the developer, such as Lennar or DR Horton or, um, century builders, unless you're going directly to them and in a standard real estate transaction, you're going to have to offer more. So be prepared to pay a little bit more, five, 10, sometimes even 20 to 25,000 more. And I know that that'll make some people gasp, but it's really just the truth of the matter. So it sounds like to me, you need to reduce what you want to purchase by 20% to give you a starting amount as to what you should go after yeah correct correct i mean it, it's it's one of those things yes yeah, it's just one of those things miss Mockins. like i said the market is just i mean for lack of a better word it's it's insane it's insane right now but you know you adjust and move accordingly allow the the factors or allow the the, the market indicators to to do what they do and you got to roll with the punches so it's been crazy before and we got through it. So yeah. Yeah. we'll do well, it again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom and allowing us to peek into your journey into real estate. And um, let me ask you to make sure you're going to be back tonight for my two cents, right? 110%, my dear. That's what I'm talking about. So, hey, you all, don't forget to join us tonight at 6 p.m. You just heard Miles. He's going to be here right here on YouTube Live, Facebook Live for another edition of My Two Cents. Grab a drink, set your clock for a good time as always. We'll see you tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Ms. Mockins. I appreciate it. Absolutely. The Culture is produced and owned by the Culture Media Group. It cannot be reproduced or broadcast without written consent. All rights reserved 2021.